Joseph Schubert once said, better to debate a matter without settling it than to settle a matter without debating it. Tonight, we don't expect to settle conclusively the question, does God exist? But we will hear the best arguments for and against the existence of God. Speaking in the affirmative tonight that God does exist is William Lane Craig. He is Research Professor of Philosophy at Talbot School of Theology, La Mirada in California. Speaking against the existence of God today is Stephen Law. Stephen Law is Senior Lecturer in Philosophy at Heathrop College, University of London, and Provost of the Centre for Inquiry UK. Now, in tonight's debate, I'm going to defend two basic contentions. First, that there are good reasons to think that God exists, and secondly, there are not comparably good reasons to think that atheism is true. There's a great deal of bad stuff in the world. There are moral evils, the terrible moral deeds we do. There are also natural evils, such as natural diseases and disasters that cause humans and other creatures immense suffering. This might in many ways be a beautiful world, but it's also a quite staggeringly cruel and horrific world for very many of its inhabitants. Now certainly the terrible evil and suffering in the world is the greatest emotional obstacle to belief in God. But as philosophers, we're called upon to say not how we feel about a subject, but what we think about it. If Professor Craig's God exists, then these hundreds of thousands nay, hundreds of millions of years of horror must ultimately be, well, all for the best. And when I think hard about the problem of evil, it turns out to be extraordinarily difficult for the atheist to prove on the basis of the evil in the world that God does not exist. But surely, as we look back across the eons, we witness suffering of such depth and magnitude that it becomes highly implausible that it can all be fully explained away. In which case it looks like very powerful evidence against the existence of Professor Craig's God. Well a number of people had the question for you Stephen, uh, Abina included among them. Um, well if you don't believe in God what did create the universe and, and another person asked what about the cosmological argument. How do you respond essentially to, to Bill's contention that there has to be a cause um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the answer to the question, why does the universe exist? Do you, do you disagree that Bill's... Bill believes he obviously has a logical argument that suggests that there is a cause for the beginning of the universe and that cause has to have these certain properties. Yeah, it, it looks... You, it, it looks a bit, again, I'm not going to be steered into an argument still steered into a discussion about first causes and so on, given that it's absolutely irrelevant so far as Bill, establishing that Bill's God exists as opposed to, say, an evil God exists. This argument, even if it was cogent, would provide as much support for belief in an evil God as it provides support for belief in a good God. And what the question you asked, Bill, was, why does this show that your God exists? And, we, I mean, the only, the only answer, I think, was the moral argument, really, wasn't it? I mean, and the resurrection. The moral argument and the argument from the resurrection of Jesus supplement the cosmological and fine-tuning arguments to build a cumulative case for God's existence. I mean, obviously, uh, what we've heard time and again from Stephen this evening is that your cosmological argument doesn't tell us anything about the nature of God. Um, well, he doesn't say that. He says it doesn't tell you anything about the moral nature of God. And of course, defenders of the cosmological argument have always recognized that. It's not intended to. It's n not that type of argument. Is, is it enough it's, for him to say, we just don't know? No, no, that's not enough, because you've got to deny one of the premises if you're going to deny the conclusion. This is a deductive argument. You've either got to deny that the universe began to exist, or you've got to deny that if the universe began to exist, it has a transcendent cause. This is not a God of the gaps argument, uh, trying to postulate God to fill up the gaps in scientific knowledge. This is a philosophical argument, and the scientific evidence is just one of the reasons that I believe the premise is true that the universe began to exist.